Colleagues, the uh, fifth plenary meeting of the General Assembly is called to order. The Assembly will hear an address by Her Excellency Ares Siomara Castro Samienta, President of the Republic of Honduras, and I request protocol to escort Her Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome Her Excellency, Iris Siyomara Castro Samienta, President of the Republic of Honduras, and to invite her to address the Assembly. Distinguido Senor Distinguished President of this General Assembly, Distinguished Secretary General of the United Nations Organization, distinguished heads of state, representatives and delegates here present, citizens of the world. I stand before this global rostrum in what for my country is a historic event not only because I am the first woman to have the honor of leading our Central American nation, but also because I represent the first democratically elected government after our country moved through 13 years of dictatorship. The 2009 coup which saw us mired in cruel killings and death squadrons, two fraudulent elections, a pandemic, and two hurricanes. It is impossible to understand the Honduran people, men and women, and the huge caravans of migrants without recognizing this context of cruel suffering which we have been forced to endure. However, electoral democracy is not enough to guarantee the material and spiritual well-being of our people. Thirteen years of dictatorship overseen by the international community led to the country multiplying its public debt sixfold and saw the country reach a 74% poverty rate, the highest ever seen in the history of Honduras. Four, five rather, of every 10 of my compatriots live in abject poverty. However, it is my firm belief that none of these figures will astound anyone in a world which today lives under monetary dictatorship. A monetary dictatorship which imposes draconian measures of fiscal discipline on the poorest among us. A monetary dictatorship which increases the suffering of the majority left behind and a monetary dictatorship in which speculative capital has no limits. It is patently clear that today, for our country to survive, we must reject this so-called austerity which favours those which concentrate wealth in a few hands and favours those who increase inequality exponentially. Since we entered office at the end of January, we have demonstrated iron will to find consensus. We have always expressed a resolute desire to achieve agreements, which means that we can act on our commitments. We have remained clear that we will not go back on any of our agreements. However, 
efforts to undermine the people's will are coming at us from all sides. At the same time, we see conspiracies being fostered in the same sectors which looted the country alongside their pro-coup allies. These sectors are emboldened by a flagrant anti-democracy attitude which sometimes comes disguised as diplomacy. Public policies endorsed by the rent-seeking model on the part of the international financial community over the last 13 years have pulled us into a world full of violence and poverty, a world where projects fail and are abandoned, a world of corruption, looting and drug trafficking. No one among the international witnesses of the fraudulent elections of 2013 and 2017 were ignorant of the fate to which they were dooming our peoples. And however, they proved themselves to be indifferent to the worst plague which has ever beleaguered our country. Capitalist hubris and petty self-interest led many to opt for deceit and at the same time organised crime brought the country to the brink of an abyss. The poor nations of the world will no longer tolerate coups. They will no longer tolerate the use of lawfare nor, nor colour revolutions that are habitually organised to plunder our extensive natural resources. The world's industrialised nations are those responsible for the grave degradation of our environment. However, they make us pay for their lifestyles of excess. And to do that, they spare no effort to embroil us in their plans and in an endless crisis, doing what they can to claim and to ensure that our hands and feet are tied. The Honduras that I lead is being built on the premise of a humanist remodelling. We are building a Honduras coloured by dignity and which the thread of sovereignty runs through. This Honduras will do what, it, what legally is important to restore our environment and to protect this common good for all of our people. As such, we cannot accept this arbitrary world order in which there are third and fourth class countries, while at the same time those that think of themselves as civilised never tire of staging invasions, waging wars, engaging in financial speculation, and crucifying us with their inflation time and time again. I'm taking this rostrum to demand that we be respected. We wish to live in peace. Stop trying to destabilize Honduras Stop trying to impose your measures upon us and stop trying to choose who we must have relations with. The people is sovereign and that was demonstrated by them on the 28th of November when they supported my victory, a victory 
that was the biggest in my country's history. The resistance that combated the dictatorship that we lived under for 13 years. This 15th of September, we will celebrate our Independence Day. Indeed, we did, and I was accompanied by the people who spilled out onto the streets. They, in so doing, flew in the face of public threats, and they fought against this idea of giving over national goods to the highest bidder. Never again will the stereotype of a banana republic weigh heavy upon us. We will put an end to mo monopolies and oligopolies which do nothing more than impoverish our economies. A generous people that has paid with its blood to defend forests and rivers. This generous people will not forget that during the dictatorship Hundreds and hundreds of young people were killed. They will not forget that our comrade Berta Cáceres was killed. They will not forget the forced disappearance of Honduran people simply because of the way, their way of thinking. And they will not forget any of the Garifuna comrades that dis disappeared two years ago now. Every millimetre of the homeland that they pillaged on behalf of the sacrosanct freedom of the market and other systems of privilege was spilled with blood. It was tainted with the blood of the indigenous peoples. My social and democratic government will return to the rule of law. We will rebuild a state of justice so that none of the above happens again. We are working hard to prioritize stimuli and we are working hard to eliminate abuse of the fiscal system. We've already begun by promoting a law which declares energy a public good. We've returned workers' rights to them and we have supported our internal market by investing in agriculture to ensure food security and we have provided subsidies to the poorest among our citizens who will no longer pay for electric energy. We have set about renegotiating free trade treaties. We have taken the sovereign decision to invest in our development by substituting imports. But at the same time, we are competing on international markets without subsidizing the excesses of developed nations. Women for centuries have been denied the right to be included in development. We will recognize the important role that women play in a society as a part of the very spinal column of that same society. We will provide healthcare, quality education, security and food sovereignty to our children and our young people. For Honduras, every caravan of migrants that flees the dictatorship, as we saw for more than a decade, is a severe loss for our country and for their families. Figures suggest that this exodus prompted by neoliberal injustice creates more and more unemployment and means that we are doomed to dependency. 
an undesirable dependency indeed. Paradoxically, in our country, migrants create more foreign currency income than many of our traditional exports. We express our solidarity and support with the diaspora. In Honduras, we cannot continue to support the hypocrisy of a system which tries people for crimes linked to drug trafficking However, for more than a decade, Honduras was supported in its attempts to commit crimes, had support for electoral fraud, and was supported in its attempts to commit crimes against the homeland, which affected millions of Honduran people. To get to the bottom of all of this and lay waste to it once and for all, we're going to establish an international commission to fight against corruption and impunity with the support of the Secretary General of the United Nations. Honduras will only have a future if it takes firm strides forward to dismantle the neoliberal economic dictatorship. As such, we're already getting to work remodeling our homeland and establishing an education system which instills Honduran people with the ideals and values of our national hero, Francisco Morazán Quesada. In Honduras, my government has embarked upon a process of national remodeling and is ushering in deep-rooted change which is based on four fundamental pillars. One, the revolutionary transformation of education. We've looked to extol the human spirit and eradicate colonialism. We're looking to build an alternative economic model which is deeply sovereign. Our third goal is to build a system whose very core is flying high the values of humanism, solidarity and integration with brotherly peoples, peace and respect for human rights. The fourth pillar of our new project is to progressively deprivatize public services such as healthcare, drinking water, electrical energy and internet. Today, war is once again punishing the poorest of our world. Today, those of us that are invaded countries call for the return to the respect for the principle of the self-determination of peoples. We reject the cruel, heinous blockade visited upon the sister republic of Cuba and its people. It is time to have a serious discussion about the multipolar nature, nature of our world. President Barack Obama took the first steps towards putting an end to this outrageous blockade. The President of Colombia, Gustavo Petro, stated that the aggression against the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela must now end once and for all. Peoples of the world, as our comrade Berta Cáceres said, let us act, world. We still have time. Many thanks indeed. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank uh, the President of the Republic of Honduras for the statement just made and request uh, protocol to escort Her Excellency.